Let's follow up on uh, what I was talking about in the last time. Uh, the fact that star J w is sort of a more natural thing to think about than J in terms of a current. Um, and it's just a good excuse to do an example of integrating a three form in space time. Um, try to get it used to four dimensions, really, but especially in the case where one of the dimensions happens to be time. Um, so we'll do this special case where, I mean, it's not really a special case, but just no notationally. Star J, if J is really this. Uh, the charge current for four, uh, four dimensional one form. If you do do the signs carefully out, then the one two three component is rho, the charge density, and then the other ones are minus j one, j two, and j three. And then the question is, what should we integrate this over? Well, as I said, just waving my hands or not even showing my hands last time, you could take it um, just spatially x y z x not x one x I guess x1, x2, x3. And you could take some sort of cube or a blob or whatever and just have that exist for a moment in time. So no time extent. Well, that's three dimensions, and it doesn't go into the fourth dimension time at all. So it's just a three-dimensional object, and it only goes in the x1, x2, and x3 directions. And we could think about the integral. Let's, let's call this uh, E for, I don't know, P E is a good name for blobs for integrals. We're going to integrate star j over that three-dimensional object. Well, it's exactly what three forms are, are designed to do, to integrate over three-dimensional objects. We haven't done it in a while, though. And what's going to happen? Well, we're supposed to um, parameterize this, right, and pull it back. Well, it is a simpler way to think about that. Um, the t variable doesn't change here. We're going to get no motion in t. Motion, or in the x naught variable, that's what would link up to this guy, and this guy, and this guy. So dx naught, that's measuring how far things go in the x naught direction. This doesn't go in the x naught direction. It has zero duration in time. And so that's all these three, three are going to die. And we're just going to get the ordinary integral over the three space dimensions of rho. And guess what? That's q. That's the charge enclosed. So it's an incredibly natural thing to in integrate over this guy. All right. Now, what would happen instead if we integrated over something that did pr go into time? So let's change the picture a little bit. Let's say that's x1, x2, and here's x0, which is the time variable. So I can't see that x1 very well, can you? OK. And um, I have to suppress one of the dimensions here. But let's actually, let's, let's say, well, it makes sense to suppress it. Because let's say we're talking about a surface, a physical surface, like a net, a stretch taut net. And it happens to not extend. It doesn't extend at all in the x3 direction. So physically, it's really just something that's in the x1 and x2 directions. There's that net. And then I'm going to put that into a space-time picture by actually letting time be that, that third direction. And I'm going to let the net actually hang around for a while. Well, guess what? It's going to actually look almost exactly like our previous picture with the, the labels changed. So this is a space-time picture. I'm not drawing a three-dimensional spatial object. I'm drawing the, you know, like, the, like the present incarnation of the net. And then like you know one second later, there's the future net. It's the same object, but just considered at a different time. OK. So does it, let's, let's see mathematically, does it make sense to integrate that? And wh what does it mean physically to integrate that? Well, again, this doesn't extend in the x3 direction. So now these guys are all going to die. And I'm just going to get the integral of over this guy. So let me erase that. So the integral of star j is now going to be the integral. Now I'm going to break it up into time. I'm going to say, let's say, starting time to ending time. And then let's say this net, the physical, um, oh, I can't see that S, can you? Let's say the, the two-dimensional surface was, let's call it S. So this blob is really all the physical, all the spatial points in S from time ta to tb. Um, of just minus j3 dx naught wedge dx1 wedge dx2. 
Okay. I know it's getting kind of scooched over there. So I'm taking a, a uh, current component, exactly the current component that's perpendicular to this surface. Remember, this surface was entirely in x1 and x2. So that's exactly what I'd want to, what I'd want to integrate to take the flux through that surface. I'm integrating it over the surface. That's going to be a rate of flow of current. And then I'm integrating it over time. That's going to be a total flow of current. It's going to be just how much current, how much charge has passed through this surface in this amount of time. And so that, those are two examples of how the integral of star j, the integral of a three form, in spacetime is an incredibly natural thing. When you integrate over space components, you're integrating a spatial density to get um, a total amount. And when you integrate over something that has two space dimensions and one time dimension, you're integrating a current density um, to get a total amount of flow of, of the stuff. So in general, a three form in spacetime is really the right way to describe stuff flowing. And using star, you can always translate between one forms and three forms. And sometimes one forms are nicer to think about. But in a way, the star j is kind of the more natural thing, because that's the actual thing that goes into the integrals when you're saying, oh, I want to translate this from infinitesimal stuff, densities of amount of charge and of current, to actual uh, macroscopic amounts of charge and current. It's really the star j that you're integrating. Um, so it's a really good example of how a three form in a four dimensional space is really something that it's a very natural way of encoding something that you think about from the start of mathematical theories of, of flow.